So if there's one integration technique that the internet loves, it is Feynman's trick of exchanging the order of integration and differentiation. And that relies, well, on exchanging that order, which is represented by the following equation. Here we've got the partial with respect to x on the outside. Here we have the partial with respect to x on the inside. And so maybe one of the most classic integrals that uses this trick is this integral from zero to infinity of sine y over y dy. And so let's maybe sketch the solution to that. And then the real purpose of this video is to look at an example when this trick does not work. Okay, so like I said, we're just gonna do a sketch of this. I think lots of people have videos of this integral exactly. But what we'd like to do is write this as a function of x, y in here where we've evaluated at a certain obvious value of x. So check it out. This is the same thing as the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x, y times sine of y over y dy evaluated at x equals zero. That's because if we plug x equals zero into that exponential, we get e to the zero, which is one. Now let's maybe go ahead and call this function capital F of x evaluated at x equals zero. So what we really have here is that this integral right here, maybe without the evaluation at x equals zero is a function of x. And now we want to form some sort of differential equation for this new function. So let's look at f prime of x. And so that'll be the integral from zero to infinity. Here, we're assuming that we can exchange the order of integration and differentiation here. Taking the derivative of e to the minus xy with respect to x, we'll have a minus y pop out. That minus y will cancel this y in the denominator leaving us with a minus sign, which I'll bring out front, and then e to the minus xy times sine of y dy. But now we could evaluate that, and it's not so hard to evaluate that. There are a bunch of different ways. Perhaps one nice way is to take this sine function and write it as the imaginary part of e to the i y. That means in the end, we have minus the imaginary part, the integral from zero to infinity of, let's see, it'll be e to the y times, let's see, minus x, so minus x plus i. And then of course, this is an integral with respect to y. But now we can take the antiderivative of that. Let's see what we're left with. So we have minus the imaginary part, and then we'll have e to the y times minus x plus i over minus x plus i, evaluated from zero to infinity. And that's really y approaching infinity. But let's notice if y is approaching infinity, this numerator is approaching zero. If y is equal to zero, this numerator is equal to one. That's the lower bound, so that'll cancel out with this minus sign leaving us with the imaginary part of one over minus x plus i. Now what I'll do is multiply that by the complex conjugate, or really like a constant multiple of the complex conjugate, I'll multiply it by x plus i. So there I've got it, the numerator and the denominator multiplied by x plus i, leaving us with the imaginary part of x plus i, and then that denominator multiplies out to Let's see, minus x squared minus one. But now if we extract the imaginary part, the part attached to i, we'll get minus one over x squared plus one. And maybe that's where I'm gonna leave this thing. Like I said, this is just like a quick sketch of this, but we're deposited this differential equation, which is fairly easy to solve. And then solving that differential equation, I guess also with the fact that as x approaches infinity, f of x will approach zero. You're also gonna need that. Will allow you to find the value of f of x at zero in the end. So like I said, I didn't wanna really do all the details of this because this is elsewhere on YouTube. But now I'd like to jump into the real purpose of this video, which is to look at a nice example where this does not work. 
So now we're ready to look at this example where everything falls apart. And this is built off of an example in some lecture notes by Keith Conrad. You can find them fairly easily online. I think they're attached to the University of Connecticut website. So we're gonna consider the function f of x, y, which when x, y is not the origin is 2x cubed y over x squared plus y squared all squared, and it's equal to zero when x, y is the origin. Okay, and so now let's look at the following function f of x, which will be the integral from zero to one of f of x, y, dy. So of course, we're gonna eventually wanna look at f prime of x because that'll be, let's see, this left-hand side over here. Okay, so if we were to do this, well, we can bring a two x cubed out, but I'm actually just gonna bring an x cubed out. And then we have the integral from zero to one of two times y over, we have x squared plus y squared all squared dy. And now we're gonna attack this integral with a u substitution. And it's indeed a fairly simple u substitution. We'll take u to be equal to x squared plus y squared. That means du is equal to two y dy. So let's see, there's our u term. And then here we have our du earmuffs. So that's gonna give us x cubed times the integral from, well, something to something. When x is equal to, or when y is equal to zero, u is equal to x squared, and likewise, when y is equal to one, u is equal to x squared plus one. So that gives us our new upper and lower bound. And then we have one over u squared du. So taking the antiderivative, we'll have x cubed over u, that'll be attached to a minus sign, evaluated from x squared up to x squared plus one. Then let's see, let's maybe like put in the lower bound of integration first and just get rid of the minus sign. So putting that lower bound of integration in first, we'll have x because it's x cubed over x squared. And then for the next part, we'll have Let's see, x cubed over x squared plus one. So that's what this thing evaluates to. But now we can smash both of these things together and we'll see that we get x over x squared plus one. So that's my function f of x. But now, like I said before, we really want our function f prime. So we can take the derivative of that using the quotient rule. And what you'll find is it has this nice shape, one minus x squared over one plus x squared squared. And then also let's notice that f prime evaluated at zero is simply the number one. Okay, so that's our first part of what's going on here, this left-hand side. Now let's investigate the right-hand side. So with our function, we determine that if we take the integral first and then differentiate, well, we found a version for that function, but as we'll see later, it'll be important that when x is equal to zero, this is equal to one. And so now let's, on the other hand, look at the partial of f with respect to x. And so that'll be looking at the right-hand side or building up towards the right-hand side of this equation. Okay, so, you know, I maybe won't go through all of the details because that's just like a practice in using, you know, all of your derivative rules, but you'll end up with something like this. So we'll have two times x squared times y times three y squared minus x squared over x squared plus y squared all cubed. And this is as long as y is not equal to zero. But then this is gonna be equal to zero if y is equal to zero. So again, you can do that just by differentiating both of those parts right here. But I guess like really importantly is that if you take the limit here as x, y goes to the origin, um, you will end up with this thing right here. You will, you will end up with zero. So this is really x differentiable for all values of y. But now let's notice if we were to plug in x equals zero to this, 
we simply get zero because notice we've got a multiplier of x squared right here. So it's equal to zero, even when y is equal to zero because when y is equal to zero, the whole thing is zero. So that tells us that if we have the integral from zero to one of the partial of f with respect to x, where x has been evaluated at zero dy, you get zero. Okay, so why is that a problem? Well, let's compare these two green boxes. And well, zero is most definitely not equal to one. So that means we do not have equality of these two objects everywhere. Perhaps we have equality most places, but we don't have equality at x equals zero. So since we don't have equality at x equals zero, it is not legitimate to exchange the order of integration and differentiation. So now I'd like to introduce some of the hypotheses for this equality to hold and see why it does not hold with this function. So what went wrong here can be summarized by the hypothesis inside of the Leibniz integral rule, which is maybe a more complicated or a bigger version of this. And the Leibniz integral rule says that this equality holds for all x on a closed interval between x0 and x1 if f of xy is continuous in an open set that contains this rectangle. So x0 to x1 cross a to b. But let's notice that this is not true over here because we can show that f of x, y is not continuous at the origin. And we can do that by taking the limit as, let's see, x goes to zero along the line y equals x. So if we go along the line y equals x, then that means this whole thing is gonna collapse to, let's see, two x to the fourth over 2x squared all squared. So that 2x squared all squared is gonna give us 4x to the fourth in the denominator, which is 1 half. But notice that that is not equal to f of 0, 0, even though this limit is happening towards the origin. So the limit is not equal to the functional value. So this is not continuous at the origin. But if it's not continuous at the origin, it can't be continuous in an open set containing the origin, which is what we would have needed to have equality where equality indeed failed for this case. So if you're still around, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. It would really help. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.